Before we get into our message, I want to share some very nice news with you. Some of you know and some of you don't know. Let me turn this machine on so I can move about a little bit. So they'll get my... Okay, he's got that away. Last Sabbath, after service, we had a baptism. And the person of Luis Jacopicio and uh, he wanted, because of this COVID problem, did not want to have it in for everybody because he said that he a, has a risk factor. He said, well, Louis, we can do it. We had a wonderful time with a few that stayed by. But today I want to issue his certificate in the presence of the church. And Louis, since you're not here, he told me he'd be watching online, so I'm going to ask his instructor. Would you come, my friend? And he will deliver this to Luis with a welcome to the family package. Come on up. Now, before I give him this, you have to make a decision. Our policy is that the church votes people in and the church votes people out. So he has been baptized, correct? correct. So I need a motion to the fact that he be accepted here as a, well, I got several motions. A second to the fact. All in favor say aye. And Louis, if you can see some of those hands, then you can know that you are now a full-fledged member of the Midvale Parks. Tucson Midville Park, 7th Adventist Church. Would you deliver those for us, please? Absolutely. Badly. Appreciate it much. Let me shake your hand for his behalf, see? <laughs> Give him a shake for us. <laughs> That's one of the fun parts of being the pastor. We have some others that are being baptized, coming up in the ways that are studying, made that decision. We pray for them every day. God will keep them in that commitment because I'm going to tell you folks who've made that decision and are preparing. The devil's not happy and he's going to do all he can to discourage you. That's one of his most successful temptations, discouragement. Keep your eyes on Jesus and he'll keep you from getting discouraged. He's in charge. Today's a simple message. Guide to eternal life. Before we go there, let's pray together one more time. I need God's help. Lord, we thank you. We praise you for your gift of the Holy Spirit. Ask for him now. Hide this piece of clay and speak to us through your word. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Sorry about that, but the song was so pretty that tears came to my eyes, so God is good. Our scripture reading was from Matthew chapter 19, and I want to stress primarily the last part of Jesus' comments. The last part of Jesus' comments in Matthew chapter 19, there, excuse me, there in verses 16 and 17. I'm not going to use the story of the rich young ruler today, except that part where he asks a question and Jesus responds. It says, Now behold, one came and said to him, Jesus, Good teacher, what good thing shall I do? that I may have eternal life. And so he said to him, Jesus now in response, why do you call me good? No one is good but one, that is God. But, and here's the part now, if you want to enter into life, what's the last part say? Keep the commandments. Now I have an issue, I'm gonna say I have an issue, I have a concern. If I had and within my ability, which I don't, to 
pull from my pocket a hundred dollars for each person that I could have stand right now and repeat verbatim from the Bible, the Ten Commandments, how many of you would gain one hundred dollars this morning? Don't I? Some would. I need five hundred dollars, maybe six, seven. But you see, the problem is, I know there are some here that can. My concern, there are too many who can't. Question for you to consider. If I don't know something, can I do that? If I don't know, can I do it? No. Now I may know and not do. But if I don't know, I can't do it. Correct? Jesus said, if you love me, what? Keep my commandments. But if I don't know his commandments, can I keep them? And Satan's objective is to keep you in the dark and have you think you're fine if you can think of some parts of the commandments. So today I thought I'm going to do one of two, th one, well, I'm going to do this. Would you turn in the Bibles to Exodus 20? We're going to read the commandments as they are in your Bible, and then I'm going to read it as it is in another Bible with a few comments, and then we're going to be done. So if you turn to Exodus 20, please. And I'm going to read through the Ten Commandments as written in the Bible according to the New King James Version. And I want to start with verse 2 of Exodus 20. Because that's a very important verse, and I will comment about that to begin with, before I get to reading all of them. In the Ten Commandments, God first, we call this the preamble. And He speaks in verse 2, I am the Lord thy God which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Before God said, keep anything, He set us free. Now His point is, if you want to stay free, keep my commandments. Here they are. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Number one. Two, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the waters under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. What does it say? Visiting the iniquity of the fathers unto the children unto the third and fourth generation. But showing mercy unto thousands of them that keep my commandments, showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Number three, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is. And he rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day, and he hallowed it, made it holy. Five for the children, the stories this morning. Honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Short one, thou shalt not kill. Next one is short two, thou shalt not commit adultery. As the next, thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Pretty clear. Simple. Comprehensive. And any sin that we commit violates one or any combination of those commandments. From my perspective, the one that is violated probably the most 
is number one. But let's quickly run through them now from a different version. I'm going to use the clear word version of the Ten Commandments. Verse 2, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage, and set you free. Now that you're free, I want you to stay free. Number one, you are not to look to people or things as gods or love them as much as you love me. And I think maybe just get through part one today because I need to go a little bit longer than the other part. So we do God's part, four, first four, okay? Part two next time. But notice that you are not to look at or to people or things as gods or love them as much as you love me. The King James Version is, thou shalt, not have, thou shalt have no other gods before me. I mention number one because the one that we find that people violate the most, in my opinion, well, yeah, I know, but I think. Who's the God in that statement? I am. Isn't that not true? When we put our opinions before a thus said the Lord, then I'm saying I'm more important than God. And there's a lot of people guilty of number one in church. And I will not exclude myself. I have been guilty too. But I'm thankful we serve a God who's merciful and he's forgiving. And when I recognize that, I can say, I confess, Lord, I'm putting myself ahead of you. Forgive me. And my Bible says, your Bible says, God is faithful and just to forgive us of all our righteous unrighteousness. A short comment on number one, then I'm going on to number two. Jehovah the eternal self-existent uncreated one himself the source and sustainer of all is alone entitled to supreme reverence and worship there is no other one i ask this question let me finish my sentence here then i'll ask the question man is forbidden to give to any other object the first place in his affections or his service whatever we cherish that tends to lessen our love for god or to interfere with the service do him of that we do make a God. I want to ask this puzzle. Is it? Who has God, no, pardon me, who has governors seen, presidents seen, doctors seen, and nurses seen, and teachers seen, and I could go on, but God has never seen. Say it again. Whom has the president seen, doctors seen, teachers seen, doctors, nurses, councilmen, whom have they all seen, but God never seen? He's never seen his equal. There's no other one. Isn't that true? God has never seen another God because there is no other God. Now we make God's little g of a lot of things and sometimes people. And he says, don't do that. You only hurt yourself. Number two. You could spend a while on that, but I just want to go show and I'll give you an overview. I want you to know what the commandments are saying. Because if you don't know them, you can't keep them. And keeping them is a demonstration of our love for Jesus. Number two. 
You are not to manufacture, no, this is a new version now, this is a clear word version. You are not to manufacture idols for yourselves after things in heaven, on earth or in the sea. Don't bow down to idols or serve them. I serve, I care, pardon me, I care for you and such practices will only hurt you and your children who will reap the consequences of your sins down to the third and fourth generations. But the children of parents who love me and keep my commandments will benefit from such love for many generations. The King James says for a thousand generations. Notice the love of God, how he minimizes wrong but extends righteousness. Comments being this. The second commandment forbids the worship of the true God by images or solemnitudes. Many heathen nations claim that by their images they were just figures or symbols by which the deity was worshipped. But God has declared such worship sin. The wages of sin is what? He doesn't want us to die. The attempt to represent the Eternal One by material objects would lower man's conception of God. The mind turned away from the infinite perfection of Jehovah would be attracted to the creature rather than to the Creator. And as his conceptions of God were lowered, so would man become degraded. Is that not true? The close and, sac close and sacred relation of God to his people is represented under the figure of marriage. Idolatry being spiritual adultery. The displeasure of God against it is fitly called jealousy. In prohibiting the worship of false gods, the second commandment by implication enjoins the worship of the true God. And to those who are faithful in his service, mercy is promised not merely to the third and fourth generation as is the wrath threatened against those who hate him, but to thousands of generations. Righteousness exalts a nation. Righteousness exalts anyone who practices it. And here God is declaring that to be so. He wants us to live. That's why Jesus died. God and God alone. There's only one. Number three. You are not to dishonor me by using my name as a curse. Those who misuse my name will not be guiltless in the final judgment. I hear people talk sometimes and they say, gee, this. And
neutral God to us. You protect us. You enable us to do what we just couldn't do by ourselves. We mess up royally sometimes and we recognize that and confess our sins. You're faithful and just to forgive us. Make us over again. And you accept us as if we had never, ever fallen. How amazing. Help us, Lord, to accept you every morning. Make that commitment, Lord, today, by your grace, I will walk with Jesus just one day at a time until you come. Bless each one here. As they raise their hands, I want to be ready when Jesus comes. Some have to make decisions to be baptized. Some have made those decisions. Some have to grow in grace and the knowledge of your word. That you call all of us to do, to grow in grace and the knowledge of Jesus. Help us to be faithful, Lord, by your grace, for your honor. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Closing song is number 590. It's a well-known song. But the message is very true. Trust. And what? Obey. Obey.